Welcome to the engineering class for October the 29th. Uh, first off, let's talk about the homework that was due today. I have graded it. Uh, almost all of you turned it in. A couple of you still haven't. Finger wag for you. Uh, but most of you turned it in and most of you did the job really well. Uh, the countdown was just what I wanted and then went into the SOS and repeated the SOS. Uh, a few of you, uh, you didn't move the countdown part of the code from the loop up into the setup part. So what happened was after you counted down five times and then it did the SOS, then it did the countdown again, right? And it wasn't supposed to do it that way. They can't. So, uh, so for, uh, for those of you that apparently didn't quite fully get it, uh, after you use the drag and drop software to create the countdown and the SOS part, then you're going to have to go into the to the text mode and you're going to have to manipulate the code because the drag and drop can't can't do it for you. You got to take the code that corresponds to the countdown. You got to cut it from the loop part and then paste it into the setup part of the code. And you got to do that in the real code. You can't do that in the drag and drop. Uh, so I, I wasn't able to give you full credit. Uh, but if you were to go back and fix it, I could maybe uh, I could give you back part of the credit that I had to take away. All right, so uh, any questions before we move on to today's uh, stuff? Any questions about what uh, you did on the homework? All right, not seeing any, not hearing any. All right. Okay, so today we are going to move into a new type of engineering. We are now finished with the software slash computer engineering. Uh, although we are going to be using it some more because what's going to happen today is we're going to go into electrical engineering and many of the things we're going to build in electrical engineering uh, are controlled by Arduinos and those Arduinos have to be programmed. So you're going to have to know how to program the Arduinos, which most of you have now proven to me that you do. But the, the few of you who haven't yet submitted the assignment, you still haven't shown me that you know how to do it. All right, let's go into engineering technology. Hello. Okay, there we go. Go down here to assignments, quizzes, tests. All right, so the uh, computer engineering module, we are now done with that. So I'm gonna close that back up. So there are two new modules now that weren't there uh, last time you probably looked. So the next module we're going to be doing is electrical engineering. Uh, but before I talk about that, let's talk about this, uh, this uh, new one down here. Uh, this is where I put just miscellaneous uh, activities that aren't really part of any one particular field of engineering. Um, and so there is something happening up at the University of Utah next month that I hope that you guys will participate in. I'm not going to require it, but I will give you extra credit if you do it. It's called Engineering Day. Now, the University of Utah has been doing this for many years now, where they invite people to come up to the university campus, and you get to tour the labs that they have up there. They have some pretty cool labs. And I understand that Keeler just went, uh, went there last year, Hey, Keeler, would you be willing to unmute yourself and tell the rest of us uh, what uh, what did you do and see when you were up there? Well, it's actually really cool. Um, so they have all these fields of engineering, right? And you go around to each station and you get to learn about it. But it, I don't know how to say it, but it talks about how, well, what each part of it, which, what each engineering field which each engineering field has to offer and they explain and then um some of them are civil engineering like they'll they'll show you like they're like test things for like bridges right and oh medical engineering or medical science <laughs> engineering that's also really fun because they show all like the i don't know how to say it but you kind of get the gist. They they show what they do in each engineering field at the at the day fair. Okay, very good. Thank you. 
Yes, uh, we have sent a lot of students from Ames up there and they've all come back saying great things about what they saw. Uh, the University of Utah has some amazing engineering projects that they work on. They have some labs with some incredible equipment inside the labs. And so what they do every year is they invite people up there and you get to tour the labs and talk to people and find out what they do. But because of coronavirus, they can't do it the normal way this year. And so what they're going to do instead is a virtual thing. And so this link that I have put here in Canvas will take you to the web page where they talk about the virtual event, kind of a Zoom-like thing, basically. And so you can see here, it's going to be on Saturday, November the 21st. Uh, and it starts at nine and goes until one o'clock. Uh, so if you guys were to participate online in this event, I will give you some extra credit. Now, you can't just uh, say, hey, Mr. Hendricks, I attended, where's my credit? What you have to do is you have to write up a, uh, a short summary telling me what you did and what you saw, what you learned. It doesn't have to be long. I mean, a half a page is good enough. I'll, I'll accept a half page summary. Uh, so, so if you go up there, I will give you some extra credit. Uh, and more importantly, you'll see some cool things and learn some cool things. Now you see right here, this button that says register here. All right, so uh, in a normal year, registration is really important because the, uh, a lot of times if you just show up on the day of the event and you want to get into a certain lab, you might find out that there's too many people because they, they, some of the labs aren't you know, huge and so they can't let an unlimited number of people in there. And so uh, if you didn't register in advance, you might not get a chance to see the labs that you might be interested in. Now, as far as the online thing, I don't know how they're gonna do that, but they do still want you to register in advance. And so I do definitely recommend you guys should uh, click on the button here, register, and I'll give you some extra credit for it, okay? All right, so let's go back here. Uh, back to the modules and we'll close that up. Okay, so electrical engineering is the unit that we're going to start into now. We've actually already done a little bit with electrical engineering. When we did the, uh, the traffic light thing and when we did the SOS thing, uh, there was an electrical circuit that we were using to, uh, to uh, build it on and uh, so like what you're, what you're hopefully seeing on the screen right now is the, the traffic light uh, project that we worked on. And now in this case, I created the circuit for you. I did the electrical engineering for you so that you could just focus on the software engineering portion of the job. Uh, but now we're gonna learn how the electrical engineering part of it works so that you guys can build things like this yourself. We're going to find out things like, uh, you know, how does voltage and current and resistance and all that good kind of stuff work. Uh, and then these things right here that you see I'm circling right now. Okay, those are called resistors. We're going to learn why those resistors need to be there uh, because it is very important for them to be there. All right, we're going to learn about how does this thing work. This is called a breadboard and how do the connections on a breadboard work and all, all, basically all of the electrical engineering stuff that, uh, that I did for you last time, you're going to learn how to do it yourself. So uh, let's start off, let's just trace the flow here. So remember how it worked that uh, when I start this simulation here and the lights flash, if I hold down the button, see how the, the blue LED comes on? Now this is me controlling it. The, the, these red, yellow, and uh, green lights up here, they're controlled by the Arduino, but this blue light, that's controlled by me. So when I, whoops, <laughs> okay, thanks. So when I push the button here, the, when the simulation's running anyway, then the, the blue light comes on, same as over here. All right, so let's trace the path of the electricity and see what's happening. So uh, we start off, uh, at the place on the Arduino that's called the 
Uh, that's not a very good one. Let me see if I can make that a little more easy to see here. Okay. So this part right here, where it is labeled 5V, and that stands for 5 volts, uh, that's where the electricity is going to come out of. And so it's going to flow along here, and then it's going to come in here and go through a path here. So let's maybe zoom in just a little bit more, make it a little easier to see. Sorry, my... Uh, Okay, I can't zoom in unless I turn off my annotation. All right. So the electricity comes out of here and it comes in this way. And then it comes into right here. And now the way breadboards work is that any, any uh, hole that's in this row here is connected to any other hole that's also in that same row. So when I plug a wire in right here, that wire is connected to anything else, which is also plugged in right there. And you can see that right here, I've got a red wire that's plugged into there. So that means that the electricity then can flow through here and up and up through, the, through that wire and it flows into here. And now these guys work kind of the same way, except up here, they come in groups of five. Any of these five holes that are in the same column, they are connected to each other in the same way that they were down on the bottom here. So if the switch right here is connected in that hole and this wire is connected in that hole, then the electricity can come through here, cross the wire up here, and it comes into the switch. Now, the way the switch works is that the left side and the right side uh, are normally not connected. Uh, but when I push the button, then they become connected. And then as soon as I release the button, then they go away. So when I push the button, that allows the electricity to flow through there and it comes into this group here. And then it goes through the little light bulb and then it comes through this thing, which is called the resistor, which we're going to learn about very soon. Okay, and then it comes along here. And now, now it, it's this is in a different row than it came in on. And so the, 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 the bottom row and the second row up, they are separate rows. They are not connected to each other. So the electricity comes along here. And then here's a wire. So it can come out here, go along here. And then it can go into what we call the ground. So when you have an Arduino or, or any, any uh, similar type of thing, the, the, where it says five volts, that's where the electricity comes out. And where it says ground, that's where the electricity goes back in. And so if you have a complete path where the electricity can flow, then you have what's called a circuit. And if you have a break anywhere in the circuit, then the electricity can't flow. And so it, it, people who don't understand breadboards if they look at this, they say, well, okay, well, here's the wire comes in here, but then this wire and this wire, they don't look like they're connected. So it looks like there's a break in the circuit, but it's actually connected underneath the breadboard. And right here is connected underneath the breadboard and so forth and so on. All right. So if you have a complete path where the electricity can flow, then you have what's called a complete circuit and uh, voila, you're good. Now, what is it that's actually flowing? Well, way back, I mean, hundreds of years ago, before people really understood everything, they knew that if they took a battery uh, and they connected it up with a the wire, they knew that something was flowing through there, but they didn't know what it was. I mean, back in those days, they didn't know about electrons and protons and all that good stuff. They had no idea. Um, so they just kind of took a guess. And, and the person who gets credit for the guess is Benjamin Franklin, a name that I hope you recognize. He did a lot of experiments with electricity early on. And so he said, OK, well, let's just say that whatever it is that's flowing is flowing from the positive side of the battery to the negative side. Uh, and then we will, just, we will just say that what's flowing is little plus charges that are flowing. All right, well, many years after that, 
people learned that there are these nifty little things called electrons and protons. And scientists then figured out that what's actually flowing is the electrons and electrons are negatively charged. And so what's really happening is it's not stuff flowing from the positive side to the negative side. It's actually stuff flowing from the negative side to the positive side. But by the time they figured that out, people had already written so many textbooks uh, and you know, people were used to thinking in terms of electricity as plus charges flowing from the plus side to the minus side. And you know how people are, once you get fixed in your ways, people don't like to change their ways. So even though we now know that Benjamin Franklin guessed wrong when he chose what direction the current was flowing, we still draw the current that way. We, and we have a name for it, and it's a name that you need to know. Uh, and I trust that you're, you're taking notes here. So it's called the traditional current. So if this is my battery, here's the plus side, here's the minus side. And here is like, let's say it's a light bulb. And so the wire comes in here and goes through there and then comes back out here. So it gives off light. Okay, so we still treat it as if the thing that's flowing is positive charges flowing from the plus side to the negative side. And we call that the traditional current, traditional current, even though we now know that that's not really what's happening. Um, and so you will sometimes see people talk about the electron current. Okay, electron current, okay. Uh, and so if they talk about electron current, then then it's understood that what they're talking about is the electrons, uh, which is what's really truly happening. And so these electrons are going the other way here, okay? going the, uh, the opposite direction. So, so if you see those two terms, that's what they mean. Now, if somebody just talks about the current and they don't specify whether they're talking about the traditional current or the electron current, they're talking about the traditional current. I mean, any textbook that I've ever seen, if they talk about the word current and that's all they word is, that's all they use is just that one word current, then they're talking about the traditional current. And that's what I'm going to be using most of the time in this class as well. Um, so just be aware of that. Okay. So now I've used a bunch of words here. I've we use things like volts. You know, I talk about the uh, the Arduino has something called five volts. And I'm sure that you guys have done enough with batteries. You know, if you've got some toy that uses a battery, you, you know, some toys take nine volt batteries, other, other toys take like uh, maybe double A batteries and a double A battery is 1.5 volts. So the word volt is something that I know that you've used all of your life, but do you really know what a volt is? Um, Okay, so uh, somebody, hang on, let me let me pause class here. Somebody just joined here, and I need to let them in, and I need to verify that it really is them. Okay, so let's go back to what we were talking about before. Uh, okay, so the volts. It's a term that you've used much of your life. Uh, let's see, who should I pick on? Uh, Keeler, would you mind unmuting yourself and tell us what is a volt? A volt is a, um, is like, you know, in a battery, right? Mm -hmm. Um, is the electrical charge right in the battery that it produces to my explain. Um, okay. All right, so it, what, what it sounds like to me is that you kind of sort of understand it, but you don't really understand it, um, which is really typical of what I've seen. Almost everybody, when they come in uh, as ninth graders- Oh, hold they, on, I can't hear you. You can't hear me? How about the rest of you? Can the rest of you hear me? Can you guys type into the chat box saying whether you can hear me or not? Okay, good. All right. So Keeler, I, I don't know. The rest of them can hear me. Okay. So most people, when they come in as ninth graders, they know that a volt is a measure of how much oomph a battery has. 
um, how, how strong a battery is. So a battery that has more volts uh, can, you know, it has more strength than, uh, than a battery that has fewer volts. Um, so if you really truly want to understand what voltage is, you need to take physics where we go into great detail there. But, but uh, for right now, uh, all you really need to understand is that it's a measure of how strong the battery is. It, it's a matter of, it's like electrical pressure. So I, I see a lot of people are telling me that I'm cutting out right now. I don't know what to tell you. I'm, it's, you know, I don't control the internet. I, I don't doubt, I don't doubt you. But I don't know what more I can do. I'm the the internet is you know kind of it does its thing and I can't control it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep talking, and if you don't fully understand what I'm saying because I'm cutting in and out, uh, go back and watch the video. That's all I can tell you because everything that I'm doing is record is being recorded. Okay. Uh, all right. So. Let's go in and let's take a look at tonight's homework. So if we go back into here, so where it says conductors, insulators, electron flow, electron circuits. Okay, so if you click on that and wait a little while. Yeah, it does look like I'm having some internet problems here. It's taking a sweet time. Okay. All right, so here we are. Uh, so in this assignment, you've got two web pages that I linked you to where they describe everything that you need to know to do the, to answer the questions um, because you, you are, you are going to have a quiz here. So if you click on preview, so then you, it'll, uh, it'll show uh, you can see I, there's a bunch of questions down here that you have to answer for today's assignment. Uh, if you are having trouble understanding me, and even if you're not, uh, you can get the answers by clicking on these links. So here it comes. And so here it talks about conductors, insulators, electron flow, what they are. Uh, it talks about conductors versus insulators. Uh, I don't think that I want to take the time to explain to you uh, what's in here for two reasons. One is that uh, apparently, according to the chat box, um, I keep cutting out. Uh, so, so yeah, if you don't understand what I'm saying because I'm cutting out a lot, don't worry about it. It's all uh, explained here in, in this web page. And Adam, uh, the, an the answer to your question is yes. Uh, so it should be really easy for you. All right, so if you read through here, it should uh, give you the information to answer some of the questions. Uh, but in order to answer the rest of the questions, you're going to have to click on the second link and read through here. And on the second link here, that's when it talks about a, an electrical circuit and what makes a circuit a circuit. Okay, so if you read through here, uh, hopefully it'll, uh, it'll answer all of your questions. There is just one thing that uh, they don't talk about that I think is important. So let me talk about that. If I've got a circuit that's made up of, uh, let's say I've got a battery that looks like this. So here's the plus side of the battery, here's the minus side of the battery, and here's the light bulb. You know, this is like, well, like I drew a, a few minutes ago, okay? A lot of times what we do is uh, we use kind of shorthand symbols to represent these things. So instead of drawing a picture of a battery, I draw two lines that look like that, where one line is longer than the other. And that little, that little uh, tick mark on the end was a mistake. Okay, so there we go. So two lines where one is longer than the other. That is the schematic representation of a battery. And then the light bulb, uh, is shown as being a little zigzag symbol here. And that zigzag symbol there, it could be anything that uses up electricity. Could be a light bulb, could be a motor, could be a smartphone that's being charged up. Just basically anything that uses up electricity, we use that zigzag symbol for it. So 
what you see on the right now, that's the shorthand schematic way of representing the situation that's shown on the left. Okay, so this is a symbol that you need to get used to. But you also need to know that sometimes we even simplify it even more. Sometimes we'll have a little dot here and we'll label that plus five volts. Okay, and then we'll come over here and then here's the resistor or light bulb or whatever it is. And then we could draw a line that goes back to the battery. So this is supposed to be part of the battery here. But quite often we don't do that. Quite often we leave that out. And instead what we do is we draw this symbol right here. That stands for ground, which is another way of saying that it's connected to the negative side of the battery. So if, if we had a battery right here, okay, the, the, the negative side of the battery is connected to what we call ground. And it doesn't have to actually be like, you know, dirt type ground. It could be like if you've got a car. Let's say that uh, you've got some wiring in your car. And so this is the, your headlights. Uh, it's not a good way to spell headlights, is it? Let's try that again. So headlights. Um, and so uh, rather than running a wire all the way back to the negative side of the battery, what we, what we sometimes do is when we run a wire to the headlight and then the other wire, what we do, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Hang on, let me fix that. So the other end of the, of the, uh, of the headlight we just connect that up to, to some metal piece that's on the chassis of the car. And so we, and because metal is a good conductor, then if the negative side of the battery is connected up to some metal piece on the car, and if the negative side of the headlight is connected up to the some metal piece on the car, then the electricity can flow through that metal piece to get back to the battery. So even though we don't have a wire that's uh, making the connection here from here down, uh, from, from here over to here, even though we may not have an actual wire there, we don't need it because the chassis of the car provides that path. Okay, so we call that ground. So if you see a picture like this where we have a ground there, it's understood that it is connected to the battery, even though the picture doesn't actually show that. Okay, so that's something that you might need to know in order to answer the questions that are on the Canvas assignment, which is due next time we meet. Uh, and they don't talk about that in the reading. But the rest of everything that uh, you need to know for the assignment tonight, it is pretty well covered in the reading. By the way, uh, how is the lag? Uh, and is the sound quality still uh, coming, cutting in and out or is, has it been better for the last couple of minutes? It's better for the last couple minutes. Okay, that's good to hear. All right, so your assignment tonight is to uh, open up Canvas, click on those two links to the web pages that I told you about, read those web pages, uh, and then afterwards uh, answer the questions that you'll see on Canvas. Um, any uh, any questions that uh, you want to ask before I turn you loose to do that? Nope, not seeing any, not hearing any. Okay, so remember, just because I'm going to end our Zoom session right now, that does not mean the class is over. We still have a little bit more than a half an hour left. So I want you guys to use that half hour to do the reading and answer the questions, okay? Don't think the class is over, it's not. Okay, last chance for any questions before I end the class. If you don't have any questions, then you can go ahead and type bye into the chat box and I will see you guys later. All righty, goodbye everybody.